How are we doing there, boys and girls? Manthys here. Welcome back to another video. So it's time to take a little bit of a look at my top 10 minis. Now, these aren't strictly in any exact order because, of course, you know, you might be able to fit them into different decks and they each have their own unique abilities. But of the 40 or so minis that are out there right now, these are my top 10 that I would recommend anybody le at least level up. Or if you are slowly acquiring your minis, maybe prioritize getting these as they're remarkably strong. So without wasting too much time, let's get in straight to number one. Uh, one of my favorite minis without question is the Huntress. She is super powerful, like ridiculously powerful. She's a touch expensive. At five gold, you are going to have to make sure that the rest of your deck is not too heavy. You want to keep your average deck cost to sort of three, three and a half. So at five gold, she is really quite expensive, but she has such a fantastic ability at clearing the back line. If she hits the tank that's coming towards you, and then it ricochets to the back and it clears out all of the stuff that's actually doing the damage to you. Fantastic at clearing through mobs, carves through chickens, great for killing opposing harpies. Um, genuinely all-round fantastic mini. Uh, an auto pick in almost every single case for me. When it comes to the abilities you get when you start leveling her up, uh, Darnassian Steel is kind of situational. If you're coming against things regularly where you're just getting swarmed, having those extra bounces of her glaives is really handy. Um, otherwise, the Stealth and the Ambush or the Elven might even. To be honest, even all of her talents are very, very juicy. So the Huntress is a strong pick for me in nearly any build. Next, we did mention this one just a second ago. The next one on my list, my number two, is the Harpies. Harpies are fantastic because they are fast. They're relatively cheap. They spawn three of them. They're fast, and if you can get them to the boss, they carve. They absolutely cut through. They're one of the highest DPS units, I think, in the game as it stands right now. Uh, plus, you have the ability with one of their traits, if you can level the Harpies up a touch... Infectious swipes, great uh, gain poison ability. It means even if they only just get to the boss and they give it a swipe or two before getting taken down, they're going to leave that poison effect and it's going to tick for a few seconds after as well. Um, the Trinket Collectors is a popular one. As it's going to do give you the mining trait, but it does increase the cost of the Harpies by one, um, taking them from three gold to four gold. Uh, maybe once you are leveling this up to rare or maybe even epic, maybe look at picking the, the Trinket Collectors. The first one I'd try and get your hands on, though, is either going to be the Infectious Swipes or the Talon Dive. Um, this is saved my bacon many times take a tank in get the harpies to speed in behind and you will clear many levels far above the harpies average level themselves this is a fantastic unit the next one i want to talk at or talk about is one that's a little bit uh, a little bit questionable for some um, and I haven't seen this had too mu have too much play mostly because most people think at a one gold cost it's probably not going to be all that valuable to you but the defiers bandits these guys are crazy good these guys are crazy good because they're so cheap it spawns two of them they have stealth um, and they stun on their first impact. This means they almost never fail to do good damage. Now, the only thing you've got to be careful of is they're obviously squishy, um, but if there's one thing plowing down one of your paths and is about to take one of your towers down, dropping your Defiers Bandit is nearly always going to be a positive trade. At one gold cost, they are borderline free. And like we spoke with the Harpies previously, if you level them up a little bit and you get access to the poison trait, oh my god, they are guaranteed to do damage. Um, the ones I would pick if you get these leveled up soon is either Deadly Poison, because then they're just guaranteed to do more damage, super valuable mob, uh, or the Last Resort. If they do get carved down, if they do get cleaved down, they are a bit squishy. They do die quite quickly. They're going to do another stun for an additional three seconds that can really sort of slow down any tanks or slow down any high DPS mobs that are charging in and taking down one of your towers. Defiance Bandits are very, very good. 
Right, let's take a look at the next one. Number four. Number four on my list, I've got wrote down here. Number four is the Stone Hoof Tauren. Uh, where's she gone? Where's she gone? Where's she gone? Where's she gone? Here we go. Stone Hoof Tauren. Um, four gold. Relatively high price. Um, but quite tanky. The advantage you have here is that with the, that with the tank and the high health pawn that she has... And that charge. She's a little bit difficult to control. She'll often run way ahead of your other mobs, which can be problematic, especially if you spec into the double charge. But the charge does extra damage as well, which is really healthy, uh, really valuable. And she has so much health that she can usually stand there and carve through mobs pretty quickly. A, a firm favorite of mine and definitely one that is almost an auto pick in every situation. Taking a look at the traits that she has available to her. Um, momentum is just the one that I was able to pick. That second charge is like 50-50. Sometimes it's an absolute dream come true. If it hits one thing and then quickly zooms off and hits another and does big damage. Um, alternatively, in the early game, I think the stun might be really, really handy. Especially for the PvP side of this game. If you're going to use this uh, mini in PvP... Being able to stun things is going to just lock them out of doing any DPS um, and give either the Stonehoof Tauren or any accompanying minis a really, really good chance to just carve, carve, carve. Uh, and you will, you, will, you will get valuable trades with the Stonehoof Tauren nearly every single time if played correctly. Very, very good little mini to have. Number five then, this is going to be a tank. We are looking at the Earth Elemental. Uh, the Earth Elemental, one I've not had the ability to level up uh, to uncommon just yet. I'm still working on this one. I've got two stars, but a great tank. And one of the advantages of the Earth Elemental is that it's unbound. You can drop it down wherever you like. One of the best ways to use this is to backdoor a tower. If you see on this little display right here, they dropped the, the earth elemental in front of the tower. No, no, no. Drop it behind the tower, especially if it's a flame turret tower. Um, and it will point all of the tower's damage away, meaning your DPS mobs can come in and pew, pew, pew. Fantastic little mini. And a three gold pretty cheap siege unit as well meaning it's going to do extra damage to those towers and so drop it on a tower let it cut away your dps mobs roll in take the tower down nice and fast and you can progress forward hopefully for the win earth and elemental is very very handy in similar vein to the earth elemental number six on my list is the quill bore the quill bore has a lot of similarities it is a unbound one meaning that you can drop it anywhere on the battlefield where you like it has the advantage of that it is that little bit cheaper only two gold uh it's a touch squishier though that's the downside to this it's a touch squishier it doesn't particularly perform well against towers this is more to take out that annoying mob that's behind the line of their attack uh, if they've dropped, I don't know, a Pyromancer down or a Necromancer or something, and it's just tunneling damage into you, you can drop your Quill Bore behind enemy lines, and they can quickly clean up any mobs that are getting in the way. And sometimes your, your, uh, your Earth Elemental just needs that little bit of extra support, and that's when I drop down a Quill Bore and they go to town. Um, let's take a look at the Harvest Golem then, as we're talking sort of more tanky stuff right now. You may notice a lot of the good mobs, good minis in this game right now, are the more tanky things. Players haven't had much chance or opportunity to level up and ramp up the abilities of their DPS minis, meaning that the tank meta is really quite strong at the moment. Um, I'm often putting two or three tank minis into my build just because they don't die very fast um, nobody's got the ability to carve these things down yet the harvest golem is probably one of the highest health pool minis in the game because of its fantastic ability to come back to life uh, you kill it once and it's like no 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 i'm gonna come back and admittedly it only turns up with half health again but it goes again um, and it if you look at its default health pool uh, three and a half thousand health as it stands currently at level 10 is not bad, but it gets 50% more than that when it regenerates as well. 
Great little mob. Obviously, the downside here is that you have to send it out first. Um, you can't drop it on the battlefield like you can with the Quilbur or the Earth Elemental. But I pretty much am always running with at least two of those three minis in my deck at any time. A couple of tanks is going to do you wonders, especially on the PvE side, uh, where there's often some weird and wacky mechanics that you have to deal with. They soak up all the damage and your DPS minis, your Huntress, your Harpies, stroll in and just clean house and you win the, you win the battles very, very quickly. Let's take a look at another DPS one though. One of the more powerful DPS minis in the game is the Black Rock Pyromancer. Where has she gone? Here she is. I've not had a chance to level this one up yet, but once again, I'm working on it. It's a slow and steady progress if you're trying to play this game in a free-to-play manner. Uh, you may have noticed in my last videos I'm not pumping money into this to try and gain an advantage too fast. I'm enjoying play the playing the game and I'm leveling things up slowly but surely. Um, the Blackrock Pyromancer is great because she hits ground targets, she hits flying targets. You'll see in the little demonstration here the Murlocs get destroyed, the Harpies get destroyed. She's a really good counter to the to the harpies really harpies are so strong especially if you're playing pvp you're going to come across them frequently fantastic counter um three gold so similar cost to the harpies so it'd be an equal trade but of course your pyromancer strolls on hopefully to do a little bit more damage and get that positive value when it comes to the traits for this one, um, she's a bit of a fire mage technically. Um, yeah, they're, they're, some of them, they're, they're pretty much all about the same in terms of power. Um, the first attack doing triple damage though, I sense could be a very, very good one. That's kind of your, oh no, quick, I need to fix something. If there's a horde of mobs coming your way and is about to attack your base or is about to take a tower, you can quickly drop down the Pyromancer and her first shot doing triple damage is likely to take out most of the stuff there. It's a bit of a panic button. Uh, the Pyroblast could be quite good for that one. Or if you just need that sustained tunnel damage, 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 Configurate will definitely help with that as well, killing everything in sight. Uh, the Pyromancer, very, very good little mini to have in your team. Uh, number nine then, we're going to pick the Frostwolf Shaman. Uh, I've had a lot of fun playing with the Frostwolf Shaman. Uh, the fact that it's just a good all-round general purpose mini. You can do damage. It has the ability to throw out that heal. Um, it is quite good at just sticking behind and clearing stuff out. Um, and the elemental aspect of it means it is going to cut through some of the more tankier tanks out there quite quickly and easily. Just a good all-round general purpose mini, and it's very easy to slide into any uh, a vast amount of builds. Taking a look at the traits real quickly for the Frostwolf Shaman, I've unlocked a trait. I've not had the. I don't have enough gold at the moment to purchase one. Uh, Earthwall Totem is pretty good if you want to boost your healing capability. The Lightning Mastery chaining those attacks up to more targets is going to increase the DPS side of it. And the Earth Shield granting armor to a nearby ally is really good if you're going to combo this up with a big strong tank. Maybe a tank that doesn't inherently have armor to begin with, obviously. Um, that's going to really just synergize well. The Frostwolf Shaman synergizes nicely with a lot of other minis out there, which pushes pushes the sort of skills that this, this little mini has for you. And then the final one, number 10 on my list. Number 10, I'm going to give to the Necromancer. Um, I don't think it's overly powered, the Necromancer. It's just got such a unique ability in terms of its spawning of, uh, spawning of the the little skeletons, that it's just super frustrating. This is a this is one that I sense will do very well in PvP. It's just frustrating. As soon as a tank has cut its way through one or two of your initial skeletons, it spawns some more and it keeps tunneling damage into that target. Um, the Necromancer for me is just fun. Um, if we take a little bit of a look at the talents that are available to this one, on killing something, summon a skeleton. Summoning yet more skeletons is really cool. The Necromancer also uh, synergizes really well with the, the undead leader. Ah, can't remember the name off the top of my head. Somebody will write it down in the comments. Um, but the, the undead leader that summons all of the skeletons as well. You just end up with a huge skeleton army. It's quite quick and easy to achieve. 
The uh, summoning of mages instead of skeletons is also very, uh, very lucrative because those skeletal mages then have ranged ability. A ranged mage as a free unit is also going to start taking down some of the more, uh, your, you know, it's going to take down your harpies and things very well as well. So the jewel skulls is a good one to get on board with. And of course, Breath of the Dying, if it does eventually die, summoning yet five more skeletons from its corpse is a wonderfully powerful little mob. Um, this mini at four gold is a touch on the more expensive side, but it does so much damage and has is so frustrating to deal with. It is easily in the top 10 minis for me. So there we go, boys and girls. That's my overview of my personal top 10 favorite minis. Let me know in the comments section down below some of your favorite ones if you think there is justification for me to add any others to this list or whether you think there's a mini that does a better job than one of the ones on, on the list that I've highlighted. I, of course, I'm not an expert. I've played this game a little bit so far. You can see we've got 67 sigils. I'm playing in a relatively free-to-play approach, meaning I haven't got anything super high-powered, but this is my impressions from 40, 50, 60 hours of play so far. I'll leave it there, though, boys and girls. If you liked the video, remember to give the video a big thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow, especially as we're quite small and we're starting out over here. Um, and, of course, if you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing. There will be almost daily content on this for the upcoming future. So stick around, enjoy, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.